Hi, welcome to the IBM Developer Workshop on deploying microservices on OpenShift. Today, we're going to be deploying the back end of um, a demo microservices application called Example Bank. My name is Jan. I'm a software engineer at IBM. With us are um, Anton and Max, who are also um, software engineers at uh, IBM Developer, the developer advocacy uh, part of the IBM uh, Developer Ecosystems Group. You guys want to say hello? Hi, I'm Anton. Um, I'm an engineering manager, and I helped contribute code to this um, to this example. I'm really glad to be able to participate at the Open Source Summit and uh, see how things turn out. <laughs> Hi, I'm Max Shapiro. I'm a software engineer here at IBM, and I will be one actually going through the demo today. Thanks, Max, for volunteering to do that. Um, so uh, we're going to start by looking at the requirements if you're participating in the lab. Uh, we're going to look at the architecture of this application. Um, it uses uh, something called a Kubernetes operator for part of it, and we're going to talk about that. And then finally, we're actually going to walk through the whole process of installing uh, Postgres and the rest of the example bank components in uh, OpenShift on IBM Cloud. And um, then we're going to test the application once it's running in your cluster. So if you want to participate and follow along, you're going to need an account, a free account with IBM Cloud, um, a Docker Hub account for storing your the images that we're going to be building here and uh, the ability to log into IBM skills network which provides a web-based terminal and editor that we're going to be using to interact with the OpenShift cluster. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, application that we're going to be deploying is called example bank. There's a, a, a live instance at this address that we can uh, play with. And the back end is powered by Java and Node microservices, as well as um, I App ID on IBM Cloud, which is an identity and authentication service. Um, if you use this application, you can create an account. And this will create an in instance uh, in the user database in App ID. All the interaction with the application is reflected in the Postgres database that we're going to be installing. And um, the, the points column is populated by Knative service that is not part of this lab, but the instructions are available in the GitHub repository, for example, bank. The architecture, here's the architecture of the application. So everything except uh, the app ID user identity service is running in the OpenShift cluster, including database, uh, Open Liberty Java services, and uh, the node front end, front end service. So we're going to start by installing a Postgres operator. An operator is a mechanism for providing business specific logic in the OpenShift cluster. In our case, we're going to be using the operator hub, which is part of uh, OpenShift 4 on IBM Cloud, and it provides you with um, an App Store-like experience for installing new functionality into your cluster. There's a variety of databases and message brokers and many other services you can install, and we're going to be using a community uh, Postgres operator to create an instance of our database. Um, for the terminal, um, Max is going to be using the terminal at uh, IBM Skills Network because it runs in the browser and it's operating system agnostic. But if you have all the tools set up in a different um, environment, it, it'll probably work also. Um, <clears throat> the lab is uh, the, in the Git book uh, that Max is going to be following along uh, while doing the work. So I'm going to just Turn it over to him now if he's got the um, instructions up. All right. I think I have to stop sharing. I 
think it's worth mentioning just um, the, the purpose of the lab is twofold. One is to enable deployment of this system, but the system is a reference architecture and all of the code is available too. So it's uh, good to be able to see how it all fits together, but you can also dig into the code itself and see how it's programmed at a more detailed level um, to help sort of learn more about how the Node and Java microservices uh, fit in as well as the, as the wider architecture. Max, can you, can you refresh this Gitbook? There is, um, on the left, you're gonna see an OSS microservice uh, section if you scroll down. There it is. If you go to a lab under microservice workshop OSS, on the left there, and then database setup is the first step. Okay. Yep, over here, thanks. All right. So first thing, let's see. Open the OpenShift web console. And so I've already done that. So I've opened it here. Uh, next thing, create an example bank namespace. All right, so go to projects, create project, sample, think. Okay. And go to operators, operator hub on the left navigation menu. We're looking for Postgres and the Postgres operator for devs for devs. Okay. This one. Continue and install. And so we have to change any configurations. No, you don't. As long as you do it while the example bank namespace is selected, it'll automatically choose to install it in that. In okay, that so one. only for this namespace. Yes, okay. this only will only work in this namespace. All right. So while that's doing that, let's see what's next. Status will show succeeded up to date when complete. And okay, let's, okay, so that's done. Next, we wanna switch over to the developer view and add the database, okay? So if we go over here, switch to developer, add database, and then we're choosing database, database. database yes, that's, so these are the objects that are created when you install the operator. Okay. Installing the operator by itself doesn't create the database, but it gives you these uh, special purpose objects for creating. Are we changing anything in here? Yes, change the name. The default is database. We want it to be credit DB. This is used in Kubernetes sequence. All one word or it's one, dash? one word. Okay. And that's it? That's, that's the only it. thing we're changing? Yep. Okay. Create. Well, that's creating. Let's see what's next. Okay, this just said what we did. And now we're just um, yeah, we've already created it. And now we're watching for it to complete. It's currently pending. Once it gets this nice dark blue circle, I know that it's done. Um, let's see what's next in the meantime. Okay, going to the CLI access. Okay. So we can do this in the meantime. So let's go to here. I'm already logged in over here, and we are selecting. Cloud IDE with OpenShift, okay, so this one. Right, yeah, the, I think the with OpenShift part means that the, the tools for OpenShift are installed 
like the, the OC CLI, which is like a more specialized cube control that understands OpenShift uh, objects. So what is this setting up? So this is launching uh, a container that's gonna run a terminal and a web-based uh, code editor. Okay. Well, that's loading up. Let's see what's going on here. Looks like it's running now. Okay. Looks like this yeah. is up and running too. So let's see what's next. It's going to have you log log into the cluster with a special command line token. Okay. Let's go ahead, copy the login command. From here, we want to open yeah, the it, uh, terminal. Yep. If you want to head like control plus a couple of times, we'll make it easier to see things. Okay. Yep, we're logged in. Now the context of this terminal points to this, to the same cluster that Max was just installing the database on. Switch to the example bank project. Now we need a secret so the script that loads the schema can access the database. I'll just hit copy. You want to check out, you want to clone the example bank, uh, GitHub repo and there should be a step in here for that somewhere, or maybe I missed it. Uh, what do I click in? Do git clone, and then can you see if the? I don't remember the exact URL. It's um, I think it's GitHub.com/IBM/ExampleBank. If it's not in here then you can just grab the URL from another. Um, yeah, we can do it from a different lab. You can just do it from a different lab from any of the, any of the other labs have, have the instructions. So you can go to the beginning of the microservice one. Here it, there is. it is, yep. I'm gonna go back here. Yeah. Is this the right one that I clicked? Um, you can go, go back to database setup because we were at the running at the end of database setup. Okay, we were here. So let me copy this over. Okay. Yep. So now we're creating the schema. Mm -hmm. You can verify that uh, you're in the right place. Just do like a OC get pods. This is like this is like kube control get pods, but specific to to this OpenShift cluster. And you want to just run o OC get secrets. We can verify that that uh, secret is in this namespace. Okay, there's the bank DB. So this first, first one? one, the first one. Yeah, exactly. Okay. okay, so we're we're ready now to. You're gonna CD. Why don't you you should CD into the um, example bank directory. And then we can run that schema. Okay. And now I can run it? Yep. Okay. You want to do like an OC get pods dash W and we'll see that verify that it's uh, finished running. It says completed. Let's look at the logs for that job for that pod and verify that all the tables got uh, created. 
How do I do that? I do OC logs and then give it a CC dash schema pod name. OC logs dash what? Uh, just the name of the 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 pod C C this one? C schema load. Yeah. Okay, this is good. This is what we want. You can see the tables and schema were created for our. If you want, if you go back to the database setup, there should be a diagram there. So there's uh, primarily two tables: users and and uh, transactions, that are both um, only used internally by the um, the Java microservices that use JPA and JDBC to to talk to this database. Okay, yeah, and this is what we just ran. Okay. So we'll move on to part one. Mm -hmm. So this is for app ID. Okay. App ID, yes. We're going to start with um, there's a, this is a scripted app ID setup that um, does require you to log into your IBM Cloud uh, account first. So CD into scripts. And then logging in. And because I have an IBM account, I have to do dash dash SSO. Right. Just copy the link. Yeah, easier. I think this is running because this is running inside the terminal. I think it can't it can't talk to your browser that way. What's this account? Mm -hmm. Trying not to update it right now. Okay. So we're logged in. So all I have to do is just run this script. Run, just run that script, yes. It said it failed, what was that? It's just looking for an existing instance of app ID. And uh, since it didn't find it, it creates one for you. OK. Hmm. Next. So just a, a little bit of background on app ID. Yeah, app ID is a uh, identity management um, solution, right? So um, I, I guess in this case, we're using it uh, locally to create, you know, our own, create and manage our own set of users. But it also allows um, for integration with other identity management systems. This is, a, I guess, a convenient way to put a sort of first level of authentication around the application right right exactly yeah in this in this case it's being used standalone without not being connected to any other identity provider so what secrets is this creating that i'm doing so this creates secrets primarily for the services to be able to communicate with app id to authenticate when you go into that mobile UI and you put in a user, it stores every user in app ID. And when you log in as a user, all of the underlying services can verify with a special token with app ID that um, you're um, authorized to create transactions. Okay. Yeah, one of the things that we wanted to poke into with this example was about security and building um, building more 
private and secure applications in the public cloud, especially. So this is the first sort of piece of that in this example. Right. So the next now is you've deployed the front end service and we're just gonna we're gonna build and deploy the back end services now. So this is doing a, a Maven build of the Java part. And it's gonna, after this step, when we build the Docker image, it's gonna copy the artifacts from this build into a, an open Liberty based container. Okay. Okay, now we have to build this. Right. And this is going to tag it with your Docker Hub uh, username so that Let me export this. when we push it later on, yeah, it'll go into the right place. So while this is building, how exactly is the database talking to the service that we're building now? Well, the, the services that we're building, when they're deployed, the YAML file specifies um, a secret, that bank DB secret that you created earlier. And it takes the contents of that secret and it creates environment variables in the environment of the pod, which is picked up by the Liberty um, Java application. Okay. So you mentioned um, Liberty there, uh, yeah. So, so I know um, ha having worked on the, the Node side of the, the application, um, it's using Node Express just as a framework within that. Um, so it's pretty simple receiving uh, HTTP requests and processing them um, with, within the microservice and passing them on uh, between the microservices. Um, can you tell us a little bit more about um, the frameworks inside the Java applications? Well, the Java application uses something called MicroProfile, uh, which is a set of features for Java apps running in a, a cloud microservice environment. So it has access to um, HTTP clients and servers, um, JSON parsing utilities, um, uh, some telemetry and tracing and metrics and health checking features. And it's intended to be a lightweight uh, application server essentially, but a fully, but a fully featured one. So what is this utility that I'm building? This takes care of deleting uh, users who ask to have their information uh, deleted in the, in the UI and it runs as a cron job once an hour. And 
and it, again, we were, you know, exploring the world of privacy and, and security. And, you know, so GDPR um, requires that users can control um, if their accounts are deleted or not. So this was, we just sort of roughing in lots of the different endpoints and, and application points to be able to design for privacy. And that's another sort of aspect that we wanted to show within this example. Exactly, it's just as GDPR has a, a user erasure requirement, you're supposed to be able to delete your, your data. And, and this is our implementation of that. So what exactly are we doing in part two? So in part two, we're gonna start by taking the deployment YAML files for three of the services and edit the image uh, specification to point at the Docker Hub image that, that you just built and pushed. So you're gonna be able to use the editor that's built right into the um, web terminal. Okay. Yep. So if you can just go to file open here and it's going to be opening up to browse the example bank um, project. Backend transaction service. Right. And then deployment.yaml. <laughs> and what are we changing here? So there's going to be a reference to an image here that's going to point to, to sure. Um, an existing Docker Hub image, and you can replace that with the one that you just built here. That's right. it, that's the only thing we're changing here? Yes, that's the only thing that's being changed. Okay. And have to do this to another and file. then right so there's a de separate deployment yaml for each service so we did the transactions go to do the the user service under bank app backend uh user user service the same thing the same thing exactly just point to the, the different image Yep, that's it. And then just one more after this is the cleanup utility uh, cron job. That will be under bank user cleanup utility. And it's this time it's called it's called job.yaml instead of deployment. Okay. So this one is this is a cron job that's scheduled to run uh, once an hour and goes through all the users that requested the, that they be that they want their data deleted. Okay. Yep. And I think that was that was it for editing the YAML files. Now we can go ahead and uh, deploy everything. We're going to OC apply, which is like kube control apply. And we can specify, we're going to specify in that command all three of these uh, services all at once. And then after you do this, if you want to do, oh, just back out, um, back out oh, yeah. one level, cd that, yep. So after running this, if you want to do like an OC uh, get pods dash W, you can watch the uh, images get uh, pulled and the containers get created. And there's also a way to see this in the OpenShift web console, right? Yeah, that's right. It, it'll update, uh, if you look, go to the topology or workloads view. Oh, here it is, you can see them. Come up. Looks like they're done. Yep, running, okay. Cool. 
And I think that was the last deployment step. And now in the initial uh, front end node deployment, it created an OpenShift route, which creates a subdomain in this uh, cluster's address space. So you'll be able to just put that in your browser and visit the application. Uh, this URL? It's the, the long one there that ends in appdomain.cloud. Okay. Oh, here it is. Here it is. So um, this is talking to app ID now. Um, so had, I hit bank. You got a bank. Right? Yeah, exactly. And then and should, we're signing in or signing up. Well, there should be nothing in the drop down right now since this is a new instance of app ID. So it wouldn't be able to populate that with anything. So if you do sign up, it'll it'll insert once you hit the consent uh, checkbox and, and create account, this the node service is going to talk to app ID with through uh, a node app ID library and create And I don't have to change any of this. Well, you can actually edit the username if you don't like them, but it's um, kind of a randomly generated. So you can experiment with this app without you know, having to come up with a username. So this is the list of transactions. If you go back out, you click the round home button at the bottom and then click on some of these other buttons. Uh, that does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. <clears throat> okay. But as you click on them, you'll see that there's a little analytics view that takes uh, data from the data from the Postgres database and draws a, a nice little visualization once you go back to bank. So you'll see your transactions here. Um, the little pie chart at the bottom there that looks like Pac-Man. That's a little, that's a visualization from um, the purchases that this, this, this user made. And if you click on the little person there next to it, you have the option to delete the user or just log out. If you delete, it's not gonna disappear right away since the deletion service is a, is a cron job that runs out hourly. But if you log out and log back in, you should see your transaction is being, transactions were persisted in the, in, cl in cluster database. And there's the person, sign in, there they are. So that's it. The point the points um, are populated by a Knative service that we didn't deploy, but that is available in the GitHub repository if you want to follow along with those instructions for the mm -hmm. the remaining part of uh, Example Bank. I just wanted to to note as well that um, we built this also experimentally with web components, mm -hmm. which is an emerging spec, and we've only really tested it on Chrome. So. Um, we know for sure it works on Chrome really well. We're still uh, experimenting on other browsers with web components. So if you run into any issues, um, please try again on Chrome at this point. Are there any other steps that I need to follow? No, that is, that is it. It might be nice just to, if you could go back to that, um, that view and click on the cloud architecture link. Um, so here, just alongside there, we had a whole bunch of links with, you know, that point to related tutorials and code patterns. So just to refresh everyone's memory, um, what Max has just deployed is um, this little system of microservices built with Java Liberty and Meld. Um, on OpenShift um, and, you know, connected with app ID for authentication, connected via an operator to the Postgres SQL database. I just wanted to flash that up just to r remind everyone what, what you've just um, deployed. And, you know, all the codes are to dig into the, the different um, services and see how it's implemented. Um, and of course, we're all around to answer any questions and be happy to, to hear feedback and answer questions on this stuff as well. So, yeah, so the, um, 
example bank code is at this uh, public repository. Um, if you go to developer.ibm.com, there's further patterns and tutorials around example bank and other uh, OpenShift uh, applications. And feel free to reach out to any of us with any questions or feedback. So, thank you. Yeah. Thanks again, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.